G'day mates, in today's video I want to kick off talking about the new update, more specifically the blowtorch being vaulted from competitive. This is probably the last major update we'll get before FNCS and a lot of pros are very, very happy with this for one main reason, it's going to nerf the cars because the cars right now, if you guys have watched any tournament, you know what I'm talking about. They are ridiculous and hopefully this can help them out. So I want to talk about that and even more with this update that's going to affect competitive with FNCS right around the corner. I want to talk about who's popping off right now, who's qualifying. We had re triple qualifying for eu na east and na west and i want to talk about these skin cups that aren't skin cups how epic is now putting on tournaments for skins and then not even giving away the skin as a prize and doing it as a mobile only no build tournament this is insane it means a lot for the future of competitive and especially for console tournaments so it's a lot to talk about let's just jump into it I want to kick off talking about the most recent update, version 20.20. Most importantly, as far as competitive goes, the blowtorch being vaulted from competitive. Now, that not, might not sound like a lot, but if you've been watching any of the cash cups, any scrims, basically any competitive Fortnite in the last few weeks, you'll have noticed one very big change to last season. The amount of vehicles in Endgame, the amount of IO cars, the amount of semi trucks, the amount of regular trucks, the Lambos, just Endgame looks like GTA Fortnite. It is insane. There are like 10 to 15 cars running through low ground. And a lot of people keep asking why there's so many cars this season and not last season. One of the major changes is not having Spider-Man anymore has meant that vehicles are now the safest and most reliable form of rotation. But the other one is the blowtorch, the addition of the blowtorch. And yes, you can repair the car, but what a lot of people don't seem to realize or don't understand how strong it is is being able to repair the wheels if you pop a tire on a car it is effectively useless end game it'll still get around but you can't really turn it properly you can't really go through any builds you can't get momentum it just doesn't function at the same level but if you did not know the repair torch actually repairs the, the tires if you have chonker tires on a lambo or any car and you repair it the popped broken tire just appears like magic it is insane and it is one of the most i, I want to say broken things in the meta right now and i think epic's done a really really good job removing this right before fncs yes the cars do add a little bit of spice to the game they make it a little bit more fun i get that but when you've just got eight semi trucks just mowing through end games pretty much making low ground useless people are basically teaming in the cars repairing them not shooting at them it's just you've seen it let's be honest it's a little bit of fun it's a bit funny the first time but in fncs it just doesn't really belong and cars will still be good they'll still be really strong and maybe people will carry like a second spare of chonker tires now they'll throw one on the car and maybe carry one because they're not carrying the blowtorch so if a tire gets popped they can use it but it now means that focusing cars actually does something you can now do something effectively to stop cars because previously i would see someone smg spraying a car end game and the passengers blowtorching it at the same rate the other person's doing damage and nothing's happening or they go to pop the tires the player blowtorches all the tires reinflate and on their way so i like like this change i think it's a really good change vehicles are still going to be incredibly strong if you're playing fncs if you can get a vehicle to end game with chonker tires box it up it is going to be worth it but it's not going to be just this indestructible ridiculous battering ram end game like it is right now and again if you want to stop the vehicles if you don't want to be dealing with them end game start targeting people in vehicles start popping tires start trying to blow them up no longer can people just repair them so you're not just wasting your ammo into like an infinite shield you can actually do something now so really really good change from epic it was well received on uh, twitter as well seems like a lot of people agreeing this is a good change for fortnite i still think the vehicle is going to be strong but not quite as strong that wasn't the only thing in this update. There were some other major changes. We had the LMG being added, but it's only in pubs. The main change to competitive though, is there is no longer the blimp on top of Coney now. The blimp that was at Coney has now crashed and now the battle has moved to Rocky Reels. Again, the battle doesn't really affect competitive. It moves around some of the NPCs, but that's basically it. But this means after FNCS starts, Rocky Reels will be losing the blimp. So we've now lost Bugles, we've now lost Coney, and now we're going to lose Risky. And this is interesting because because as we go through FNCS, we are now losing loot on the map. And honestly, this map is super, super stacked. If this was a previous season, I would be a lot more worried. But right now, this is one of, if not the most looted maps we've ever seen. So as much as it's going to affect some of the teams that drop here, and obviously some pros aren't going to be too happy about it, I'm not freaking out too much just yet. I think a lot of pros will actually be happy to see there be less blimps on the map because they're just really, really insane surge spots. I like the rotation out of them. Honestly, if we went from a Spider-Man season, 
season to just no mobility this season. We didn't have the blimps. It would honestly be so depressing trying to get around the map. So I'm not excited to see all the blimps go down. We still have quite a few. It is just interesting that certain POIs are going to be stronger at the start of FNCS, but then weaker at the end. Epic's been doing a really good job in previous seasons of not making any major changes during FNCS, but I think this one is kind of unavoidable. There has to be some kind of map changes. This is very much built into the storyline that that is what is going on with the blimps right now. And without the blimps going down, there would be zero changes to the map. So again, just something to be aware of. If you're a pro player and you're picking your drop spot or you're going into FNCS, just be aware that these blimps are going to go down. If you're relying heavily on them, I would maybe reach out to some leakers or pay attention and figure out to make sure that your drop is going to keep the blimp throughout the seasons. Other than that, there's also the voting boards for the Boogie Bomb versus the Rift to go. Again, only in pubs. If I have any opinion on this one, I'm going to say probably vote for the Boogie Bomb. It's annoying to verse. I get it. Sometimes you get Boogie Bomb one pumped, but when people just keep Rift running away constantly, I just don't really enjoy that. And the Boogie Bomb is a really good way to counter vehicles and tanks specifically. I just find it a bit more fun. It's pubs. It's meant to be fun and crazy. The Rifts, yes, being good for mobility, but I don't think they add that much fun to the game. Again, especially when there's these giant blimps around the map where I can just cannon my way across the entire map. Yes, the Rift gets me there as well, but the Boogie Bomb, it adds a bit more spice. Just my take. Vote for what you want though. Speaking of FNCS, don't forget it is taking place in less than a week on the second. I'm going to be doing insane viewing parties on my channel. I'll pretty much be live 12 hours a day, like every single FNCS day. I will be making videos soon about my predictions, who's playing with who, who's dropping where. Don't worry, the FNCS hype is coming. I'm just leaving it a few more days, then I'll start dropping the videos. It is worth noting one of the more interesting things is there are two versions of this cup. One of them is a mobile only zero build solo cup. And then one of them is a regular all platform com combined battle royale solo cup. And I've been asking for the longest time saying that I feel like skin cups or at least these more fun tournaments should be platform specific. It should be console versus console and PC versus PC because it gives you console players a good chance to see how you're stacking up against other console players, especially when we haven't had a console FNCS or Champions Cup announced yet. So to see them do that, but do it with mobile only, I think is a bit interesting, especially with all the drama around mobile competitive in the past. Obviously, when Apple got shut down with uh, Fortnite Mobile, that caused a huge issue. Now, with no longer console split tournaments, mobile just doesn't really stack up against PC. So they really haven't been having like a big wave. I just, I haven't really heard about mobile competitive talked about. So it's cool to see they're getting their own tournament, but again, for only a loading screen. And I think if anyone should be getting their own tournaments right now, it should be all of console put together and that should include mobile. But again, I don't want to speak for the mobile community. Let me know in the comments down below if you think that'd be a bit better. I'm sure it's exciting to verse other only mobile players, but I don't know how healthy the mobile comp scene is right now, but I got to imagine those queue times are going to get a bit rough or there's just going to be no skill-based matchmaking. We just had our duo cash cup qualifiers. I know it's only duo opens, but as we get closer to FNCS, looking at these teams, even in opens formats, gets me excited because that's what qualifying for FNCS matters. Like, yes, round three is really, really important in round four, the final rounds, but even those early round one and round twos, we saw some big teams last season not make it out of there. So I'm starting to pay attention to how good these teams look in opens. And EU was exciting because it was a great story that you guys know that I love that when teams split up, they find new teammates and they all succeed. If you look at this, leaderboard there's some awesome teams here who split who are now doing really well with other teams so we have seti and kami obviously a new team this season but no one is surprised no one was worried whether kami and seti would perform and they're obviously doing crazy we have nebs and kinzel a new team recently formed in second place we had vortex and suns the oce boys are honestly i think defying almost anyone's expectation of how well they were going to do in eu suns has now earned twice in solos they've earned twice i think in duos now they're set to potentially make it a third time in the final finals. We have Mustache and Malabuka in fourth. And this, I believe, might be the first tournament Malabuka is going to be able to claim his money from in finals if he earns. But I'm also a little bit... I've heard on the grapevine that he hasn't got things set up just yet in Serbia. He's there. He has the potential to be paid, but he might not. But either way, now he has the potential to be paid, and that's what gets me excited. We have Hellfire and Scram in fifth. Again, you probably noticed Nebs and Hellfire, one of the biggest upset teams to not make FNCS last season, have now split 
and both of them with their new teams are top five in opens, which I love to see. Again, Scram has now split with Refsguard. If you look down a couple, Refsguard now with Clown has come in seven. So again, you're just seeing all these teams who've split do really, really well with their new teams, and I love to see it. And of course, you have Hen and Queasy following up with their insane performance since this season started and last season in top 10 as well. It's only opens, but I just love seeing those new teams formed up there. And East was a similar story, not of teams that have split, but just new teams doing really, really well. We had Aviv and Gold take out the first spot on 217. I do think Gold is one of the biggest up and comers so far this season and last season, looking really, really good coming as FNCS. We had, of course, DJ Omzo, Threats and Rise, the names you're used to seeing. And then another new team, Scoped and Magnolia. And I'm a big Scope fanboy. You guys know this. I've gotten excited for Scopes a lot in the past. You guys probably haven't heard too much about Magnolia. I only realized during my viewing parties how many people haven't really heard of him. I love Magnolia just because of the confidence he brings to Scopes and I think the vibes that he brings for the team. Fantastic IGL, but I love how well Scoped is playing right now. You probably noticed he's doing really, really well in solos as well. And I don't want to say it's because of Magnolia. Scoped has just been grinding and improving, but playing with Magnolia seems to really boost his confidence. And when they're playing together, they're having fun. They're loving it. So I'm very, very excited to watch this team coming into FNCS. We had uh, Inkins, I believe that's how I say his name, and Sin, which is a team that I haven't seen too much. Sin or Rooney. I've seen them around, but I I'd love to see them pop off this FNCS. Cooper and RN Star again, players who I've heard of, but have been pretty quiet. And coming into this one, I'm very, very excited to see them doing well. Ages Canada, no doubt. We had Death and Tabney. Tabney did great in solos the other day. Slacks Clarity and then Posed and Stacky. We did have right at the very end, Day and Clicks clutch up the qualification on 45th, 139 points. It came down to a solo clutch from Day in the very last game. He qualified by one singular point. It was a pretty standard clutch from day it wasn't actually even one of his craziest but it was one that was very very necessary because the week coming into fncs is not the week you want to miss finals that is a scary one for the confidence and one team very notable team that didn't make it for nes was actually booger and mirror we haven't seen them play too much this season because booger and mirror uh i mean the first cash cup mirror wasn't even champs yet so they just haven't been taking the game that seriously that's pretty standard of booger mirror coming into fncs they really only take it seriously when fncs starts so they did try to qualify though and they didn't have the best luck with things Mira then played NA West with Faxity afterwards and said he's just his vibes were shot you probably saw on the timeline both Booger and Mira very very upset with the state of the game competitive in general I might make a video talking about that in a few days but coming into FNCS I don't want things to be doom and gloom I want to get excited for what's coming up and uh, they raised some valid points but I did want to raise the question that this might be the season to upset Booger Mira I'm not calling it yet because it's only a cash cup and most of the pros in, uh, in NA East that I talk to pretty much say the same thing. No one is beating Booger and Miro unless they get contested, but it wasn't a great sign coming into FNCS. I hope they pull it together in those first few rounds, which let's be honest, they probably will. Moving on to NA West, we have Zio and Polo or Poyo in first on 202. I'm not 100% sure, but second place is the one I want to focus on, Rex and Reed. More specifically, Reed, because Reed has obviously been under the microscope and, and cops a lot of hate, more so than almost any pro. He's been playing a bunch of Madden, hasn't been taking the game seriously. Just a lot of people piling on Reed, but in the last few weeks, he's really turned around. He's been playing very, very well in duos. Him and Rex uh, played, I think, came third last week. I was away. I wasn't able to watch it. Then I believe the, it was the first week he qualified with Snacky and then won with Snacky. He's now been performing in solos as well. And then yesterday, he managed to qualify in all three regions, NA East, NA West, and EU. So I know Recops a lot of hate, but I think it's only fair when you when you throw that much hate around. Oh, he's not grinding. He's not taking the series, the game serious. He's washed. When he starts placing, you got to put it back on and give him props where props is due. Qualifying for all three regions in a row on stream is incredibly impressive. All right, guys, that does it for another video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.